Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Look up woman in the dictionary and you'll find Irish McKellar. As a young woman, she joined Betty Page in becoming astronomically famous as a model without having a movie contract. Her physical beauty so captivated the modelling industry that a new magazine, Eve, was launched specifically to feature her. Why Irish McKellar had to have a male stunt? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Irish McCalla, the Queen of the Jungle When the door to the entertainment industry opened for her soon afterward, she stepped into a role that fit her like a glove, and which guaranteed her lasting fame beyond her demise. However, it was not only her Amazonian features, slanted eyes, high cheekbones and towering curvaceous frame that made Sheena legendary. Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, the first successful female action hero in comics, debuted in Jumbo Comics No. 1 in September 1938. This blonde, beautiful, spear-carrying jungle girl in a scanty leopard skin was one of 19-year-old Will Eisner's first creations. He said he created Sheena to be a female counterpart of Tarzan, and that he borrowed the name from the H. Ryder Haggard novel, She. Without the spunk of Irish's athleticism and tomboy background, Sheena would not have been nearly as believable. This jungle goddess went on to star in over 150 comic books from 1938 to 1953. Sheena's father was explorer Cardwell Rivington, whose witch doctor friend raised Sheena to become a heroic champion of good over evil in savage Africa. Sheena was played in a 26-episode 1956 TV series by pin-up Irish McCalla. As her small screen fame began to decline, Irish launched herself into yet another highly successful career, that of a professional artist. She had been artistic as a child, and art had always held an enthusiastic fascination for her, but now Irish proved herself to be a highly gifted artist in the Americana genre. She continued to bask in her Sheena glory by making personal appearances at fan conventions for many years, and in interviews expressed how blessed she felt to have the best of both worlds, the satisfaction of success at artistic achievement and the loving adoration of her fans. A charmed life indeed. Irish was athletic, five foot ten, and well endowed in all the places that matter. Sheena was filmed on location in Mexico, where Makala did her own stunt work. Once she swung right into a tree and broke her arm, but that didn't stop Irish for long. When it healed, she was right back, swinging. Alberta Vargas, the famous pin-up artist, loved Makala. She is definitely a Vargas girl and one of his favourite subjects. Makala also was an artist, completing over 1,000 paintings. Irish became a member of the Woman Artists of the American West, and her work has been displayed at the Los Angeles Museum of Arts and Sciences. Born in Pawnee City, Nebraska, she was one of eight siblings born to Lloyd, a butcher, and Nettie McKellar. The family moved often, settling in Des Moines, Iowa, in late 1939, when Lloyd began working for Condon Brothers meat dealers. The family lived at 1070 10th Street. They moved to Marshalltown, Iowa in November 1941 and to Omaha, Nebraska in September 42, before returning to Pawnee City, where she completed high school. At age 17, she joined some of her siblings in Southern California, where she worked as a waitress and at an aircraft factory. She was 5 feet 9.5 inches tall and had a 39.5-19-37 inch figure, when she moved to California. Her figure matured to 39.5, 24, 36 inches within a few years, and it was these dimensions that were later quoted in Glamour magazines. She left Nebraska and moved west, not because she felt that her arresting physique might bring her fame and fortune, but because she hated the cold weather back home. Every winter she would get pleurisy, and she developed a strong desire to live somewhere warm. She also wanted to get away from her alcoholic father. Some of her siblings were already living in Los Angeles, including her older brother Bill, who had recently returned from the war. Mildred and Anna, her two older sisters, were also living there, and one of them was working as a nurse. 
Irish sold her tenor sax for $26 when she graduated in order to raise enough money to be able to join them. In mid or late 1947, shortly after she had graduated, she accompanied Bill back to LA after one of his trips home. Their mother went with them because she was eager to visit Mildred and Anna, her two eldest daughters, whom she hadn't seen for some time. McKellar moved on her own to Santa Monica. Her first job was in an aircraft assembly factory making 80 cents a day. Always an athletic tomboy, McKellar gravitated quickly to skin diving and eventually was spotted by a photographer who asked if she would pose for pictures as Miss Navy Day. Next came modelling and the attention of painter Alberto Vargas, king of the pinups, who captured her as a Vargas girl. Born on Christmas Day, she posed nude for the December page in a Vargas calendar. She liked to joke that NASA Studios discovered her and cast her as Sheena after finding her tossing a spear on Malibu Beach. Actually, it was another photographer who got her the job when the preferred candidate, Anita Ekberg, failed to show up for work. In 1951, she married insurance salesman Patrick McIntyre, with whom she had two sons. McKellar was already a popular pin-up model by 1952, when she and other models appeared in the film River Goddesses, consisting of several voluptuous young women frolicking in the Grand Canyon. Sheena, the unusual action series about a female superhero in an era when women were expected to raise children and bake cookies, ran 26 episodes in 1956. But that TV series, shot in the Mexican jungle and far more successful than a 1984 motion picture remake, has been so replayed around the world that McKellar remained popular at superhero conventions until her death. In a newspaper interview, McKella recalled being discovered by Nassau Studios. I couldn't act, but I could swing through the trees. McKella was so tall her studio had trouble finding adequate look-alike female stunt doubles. So she did her own vine swinging and tree climbing with her pet chimp, Chim. That is, until she miscalculated one approaching tree as she clung to her swinging vine and crashing into it. After that, the producers hired male stuntmen, dressed in leopard skin and wearing blonde wigs. Her elder son, Kim McIntyre, once told the press he remembered watching his mother swinging from vine to vine and wrestling mechanical alligators. Following the one-season Sheena, McKellar appeared in five films from 1958 to 1962 and guest roles on the TV series Have Gun, Will Travel and Route 66. As one writer described the effect of McKellar's signature character on girls growing up in that era, Sheena was the only female portrayed on the tube who didn't conform to the 50s stereotype. Sheena was a real rugged individualist. Watching her struggle with a new adventure every week made me feel more capable at a time when everything was so unexplored. If she could handle the jungle, I felt sure that I could handle my world. Irish returned to the personal appearances circuit in 1980, probably to supplement her income as an artist, by attending a superhero convention in Anaheim, California. It was her first appearance in front of fans in 15 years, and Irish appeared wearing her Sheena costume, which she had managed to safely preserve. She was surprisingly overwhelmed by the enthusiastic response of the fans. She again began making regular appearances at fan conventions, but after 1984, she no longer appeared in the Sheena costume. These later appearances, where she was amused to learn that she was a cult icon, were very different affairs to the personal appearance tours she had made in the late 1950s and early 1960s. In those days, the fans were enthusiastic, sticky-fingered kids, keen for a glimpse of their TV idol. Many of the fans were now serious collectors keen to take home a piece of memorabilia and Irish quickly learned that there was money to be made selling and signing photographs of herself. Throughout her life, Irish herself was a keen collector of her own photographs and was also pleased when a fan could provide a new Sheena or glamour photo she hadn't seen before. In October 1981, Irish appeared on a one-hour ABC television special called Whatever Became Of. A segment run for just over a minute and begins with her sitting on the balcony of her home in the Malibu Artists Colony, overlooking the ocean. She describes herself now as Queen of the Beach, rather than Queen of the Jungle, 
and she invites the camera inside to see what she has been doing. She proudly shows off a large seascape she painted of the coast near her studio and also displays paintings of her two grown-up sons, Sean and Kim. The piece concludes with Irish back on the seaside balcony looking very relaxed and contented as she delivers the line, I'm an artist, I'm a painter, that's what I am, I won't ever go back. Throughout this brief but fascinating segment, Irish comes across as a strong, confident woman. She would also have benefited considerably by this exposure on a national network, as it would certainly have generated a lot of interest in her at fan conventions at the time. New York Times said that Sheena's series was so bad it was fascinating. It goes on to say that the show had very little plot or action, terrible dialogue, hokey costumes, cheap nature scenes and tinny music but reports that it was a very big hit with several generations of males because of the presence of Irish McKellar. One amusing part is when the interviewer asks her about her fan mail and Irish replied that when she was Sheena, she used to get a lot of mail from kids saying, I wish my mum looked like you. Irish said that she doesn't worry about the fact that Sheena was a lousy actress because God didn't mean her to be an actress. He meant her to be an artist. And I'm a good artist, she said confidently. At the end of the segment, the presenter announces that screen testing is underway for a new Sheena to appear in a movie to be released in the summer of 1984. Irish McKellar says she has no interest in the part, she says, but she would like to draw the poster. In 1981, Irish was also offered a role in an NBC miniseries called The Star Maker, which focused on the topic of the Hollywood casting couch. The plot centred around a movie mogul played by Rock Hudson and the actress that he helped propel to stardom. She was offered the role of Dolores Baker, a former world-famous pin-up queen. Melanie Griffiths, who was then a blossoming starlet, played her daughter, one of a string of young women that Rock seduced, married and then discarded. Once she is Rock's mother-in-law, Dolores proceeds to show an unhealthy interest in seducing her new son-in-law. Irish declined the role because of her commitment to her art, and the role was given to Brenda Vaccaro. In 1982, she married her third husband, Chuck Rowland. Soon after, the couple decided to seek a quieter life in the central mountains region of Arizona. Irish described it as being in the forest with acres of trees and a beautiful little creek with a waterfall. She began to achieve a significant amount of success, as an artist in the region, with several galleries in Prescott displaying and selling her work. This success, however, was short-lived and her health began to deteriorate. In 1983, she was diagnosed with cancer of the groin, but this new affliction was successfully banished by a series of radiation treatments. In 1984, the benign brain tumour that had first afflicted her in the late 60s returned. She began suffering from terribly bad headaches which continued for extended periods of time. She eventually had her second brain tumour operation in 1984, and Irish said that this episode was well publicised in Phoenix. In late 1984, despite her recent operations, she was persuaded to make a special appearance on the Daily Entertainment news magazine to help promote the forthcoming release of Columbia Pictures' big-budget Sheena film, starring Tanya Roberts. This was typical Irish McKellar behaviour, true to the grit, determinism and can-do attitude she had always displayed. Additionally, Irish was always proud of the fact that she could still fit into her old Sheena costume. Despite the visible effects of her poor health, Irish still looked quite spectacular. Unfortunately, she was prevented from attending the premiere of the new Sheena film because she was suffering from a back injury at the time. Soon after moving to Arizona, she began working part-time during the summers as a real estate broker. She eventually studied, acquired her real estate license, and began operating out of Hidden Valley Real Estate in Prescott. The real estate business gave her an opportunity to get out into the mountain air, especially after spending many hours indoors painting. Additionally, she had always had a pleasant disposition and was good with people. She found that she was able to use her artist's eye an innate sensitivity to match property with the proper individual, and she said that she found this the most challenging aspect of the work. Another major project that Irish became involved in in the early 90s 
was the production of her biography by two dedicated fans, Bill Black and Bill Ferret. Both men were writers and artists and were also zealous enthusiasts of the jungle girl genre. Irish was in attendance to promote the book and sign copies for fans. At about this same time, Irish was plagued by a recurrence of the brain tumours that she had been fighting for over 20 years. She had her third brain tumour surgery in 1992. During the period, she and Black and Ferret were putting together her biography. That operation was again successful, but for several months her energy levels were severely affected. In September 1994, Irish attended Glamacon 1, the first of a series of conventions to celebrate pin-up art, still running to this day. The significance of this for Irish was that virtually all of the fan conventions that Irish had previously attended had invited her because of her fame as Sheena. Glamacon, however, principally wanted Irish for her fame as an early 50s pin-up model. The fact that she was also Sheena was an added bonus. Fortunately, her supply of memorabilia covered both her glamour model phase as well as her jungle girl period. Irish still had that old Sheena costume from the mid-50s in 1997, preserved intact in a safety deposit box in Prescott. She also still had the Sheena armband she had worn in the show, complete with the souvenir chip out of it from when she had been attacked by her co-star, Neil the Chimpanzee. Neil had been forced to work too hard by a zealous director in very hot, steamy conditions and had reached the end of his patience on this particular day. He had lashed out at the nearest thing to him, i.e. Sheena, his on-screen master, and had attempted to take a bite out of Irish's upper arm. Neil bit down savagely on the leather armband Irish was wearing and his teeth took a nick out of it. In the January 1999 edition of Playboy magazine, which was the 45th anniversary edition, the editors published a list called the Top 100 Sex Stars of the Century. Irish made the list, and in a personal letter to Bill Black, dated 14th of December 1998, she said, We've all gotten a kick out of that. They show a Sheena photo, my sister-in-law said. You're easy to find there because you're one of the few with clothes on. She continued to attend fan conventions until her failing health prevented her from doing so. She was still charging a modest fee for signing autographs, but now most of the money she collected went to the American Cancer Society. The story of Irish's last few years and the fatally serious decline of her health, she once said, I still can't understand why I'm a cult icon, but it's brought me many more fans who were too young to have seen Sheena, and I find it fun and refreshing to talk to them. I don't really know what I had that made so many fans so loyal over the years, but I'm very happy for every one of them. What fun to get such attention at my age. A real treat. Iris McKellar was 74 when she died in February 2002. She faced some difficult times in her last few decades, and I'm also sure her life was full of her fair share of personal turmoil, but by all accounts she largely led a charmed life. She once commented, that things just seem to happen to her without really trying. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Irish McCalla was tall with an athletic body, just as Johnny Weissmuller. Watch this video to find out how he became the first Olympics superhero.